Hey now, hello and welcome to episode 129 of Chairside Live. You'll notice I'm by myself today and that's because I'm on assignment. I'm coming to you live from the Hinman Dental Meeting in 2015 in Atlanta, Georgia. It's actually my first time getting the chance to come and speak out at the Hinman Dental Meeting. It's been an absolutely unbelievable experience. After a lecture yesterday, we uh, had a social event last night at the College Football Hall of Fame, which is just next door to right where the Hinman Meeting is. And it was unbelievable to walk in there and see uh, all the history uh, there at the College Football Hall of Fame. And it was just a fantastic event. But we're going to have to skip doing an actual Chairside Live this week because they have me doing seven, count them, seven lectures uh, over three days. Actually, it's three lectures and four hands-on clinics. And so apparently they don't have labor laws uh, in Georgia. And so they're allowed to work the speakers like we were uh, mules hauling people down to the base of the Grand Canyon and back again. But it's actually fine. It's going to be a, a fantastic couple of days. This is a very uh, special meeting that I've looked forward uh, to come to for a long, long time, and I'm happy to be here. In fact, I've run into a couple different people here who are fans of Chairside Live, and uh, one of them uh, is Callie Brock, who sent me an impression. Um, actually, she sent me a picture of her impression last year, and uh, she'd recently just been out of school, I think less than a year at the time, and sent it to me and said, what do you think about this impression? I used your technique. And I said, it's unbelievable. Here's a picture of it now. And I, I told her, Kelly, you really set the bar pretty high. We've shown some other impressions uh, since then from recent graduates, uh, but this one can hang with all the rest of them. So I got a chance to meet her, speak with her, and uh, take a picture with her as I did with several other fans of Chairside Live. So it was great to get out and get a chance to meet some of you and spend some time hearing about your practices and your concerns and what's going on in your dental life. So in lieu of a new episode, we're actually gonna show you one of the ones that we get the most requests for. And the reason we get a lot of requests for this one is because the case of the week that was in this particular episode. Uh, it's about Kennedy Class 1 and Kennedy Class 2 situations from our implant department. And so that would be when we're either uh, edentulous uh, unilaterally or edentulous bilaterally. And it's about taking bites in these situations when we've lost all posterior support. This, of course, is a challenge uh, for our regular crown and bridge cases as it is for the implant cases. But the implant department's been seeing dentists struggle with this uh, lately a lot, or they had at the time when we made this. And so we decided to repeat this one because it's one of the ones where dentists call up all the time and say, hey, I'm doing one of these cases where the patient's got uh, bilaterally uh, edentulous and I need to take a bite. I can't remember which episode that was on Chairside Live. And so since it gets requested so much, we thought we would bring that episode to you again one more time and we'll be back live next week with another new version of Chairside Live. I'm Dr. Michael Latola. And I'm Megan Strong. Stop using that old 57 burr for a post. It's time for Chairside Live. Welcome to this week's edition of Chairside Live. Megan, how are you? Doing great, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Uh, we've got an interesting case of the week to share with you this week. It's a, a pretty common problem that we see in the implant department in Kennedy class one and class two situations where we're missing all the posterior teeth either unilaterally or bilaterally and we get a collapse of the bite. So our implant department has come up with an interesting way to help you get a more accurate bite so these cases will drop right into place. But before we take a look at that, let's go to Megan with the news. A Michigan couple has been charged with embezzling almost $1 million from a Midland dentist. The couple was arraigned on the charges after a year-long investigation revealed that the wife had embezzled the money while she worked for the dentist for several years. She faces two counts of embezzlement of more than $100,000 and two counts of embezzlement of $50,000 to $100,000. Her husband faces two counts of embezzlement of $1,000 to $20,000 for allegedly helping deposit the money in various bank accounts. Upon sentencing, they could face up to 20 years in prison. Wow, that is a, a shocking story. And you know, the more you hear stories like this, the more you ask around and you find a dentist who's been affected by something like this. And a friend of mine actually puts on a CE course now called How to Embezzle from a Dentist. And it really gets the attention of the dentist because it, it just is a title that, that grabs you. And uh, it's amazing when he talks about how many dentists he works with that have been embezzled, often by the most loyal employees. You know, the ones who are willing to stay after work while everyone right. else is gone. Stuff that 
looks like they're really hard workers, uh, but ends up being a real red flag when they stick around and they want to be at work when no one else is there. So I think this is something that every dentist really needs to look into to make sure that they're not having money stolen out from underneath their noses. Anything else? Yes. Maintaining a healthy body weight is good not only for your overall health and wellness, but apparently for your oral health as well. A recent study examined 31 obese people with gum disease. Half of the subjects underwent gastric bypass surgery and had fat cells removed from the abdomen, and the other half did not have either. When the participants underwent non-surgical periodontal treatments, the surgery group did better on the measures for periodontal attachment, bleeding, probing depths, and plaque levels. The researchers proposed that either weight loss causes insulin to be less resistant, improving diabetic status and helping with periodontal treatment, or the second theory is that the leptin production was reduced after bariatric surgery, which could have caused less inflammation by decreasing the amount of cytokines and C-reactive protein present. Additional studies are needed, but it's just another reason to get healthy and fit. Yeah, I kind of feel like we don't need any additional studies. Uh, I, I'm just not surprised <laughs> that these 31 obese people uh, had more periodontal problems than uh, the non-obese people. I, I think we see it all the time where everything uh, just gets better when you get down to your ideal weight. In fact, a lot of the people that we make uh, snoring appliances for, like our Silent Night or a Tap appliances, I mean, the most ideal way to stop snoring is in fact to lose the weight. So I'm not surprised the way diabetes kicks in and other health problems when your weight goes up. It makes sense that the periodontal health would follow that same kind of thinking as well. All right, thank you, Megan. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the case of the week. On this week's case of the week, we're gonna talk about a common issue that we see in our implant department. And it relates mainly to Kennedy class one and class two cases. If you forgot the Kennedy classifications, that's certainly understandable. A class one is where we have uh, bilateral edentulous space and a Kennedy class two is where we just have, for example, a unilateral edentulous space as if we still had teeth over on this side. And in both of these cases, and this is true for crown and bridge, regular crown and bridge cases, but certainly for the implant cases as we look at this, you can see we just have a lack of posterior support because we're missing all of the posterior teeth. And when it comes time to take a bite registration for this, some dentists will just inject material between the remaining anterior teeth. Some dentists will inject material back here onto the edentulous ridge and against the teeth. And either way, we end up with a much higher remake rate than we should have because we really don't have a good way to take a nice, stable bite registration. We run into this problem in removable as well. And fortunately with implants, we can do things a little bit differently. So let's take a look at how we're going to use a positioning and bite index to solve this problem. Here are a couple of pictures of what happens in the laboratory when we don't have an accurate bite registration. These are uh, both cases where the doctor tried in the restorations and you can see uh, that the bite was way off in the posterior. We were completely edentulous like a Kennedy class one or two case would be. And then the doctor sat it in the mouth and this is what it looked like. And then he took a new bite and sent it back to us. What I'm gonna share with you today is a way to avoid this so that you don't have to go through this remake scenario. And we give ourselves the best chance of having the bite either be right on or needing very minimal adjustments when we go to seat the case. So let's look at a patient who's had five implants placed here in a bilateral edentulous area. And now we're gonna go ahead and take our impression. So we're gonna put the transfer copings into place uh, into uh, the implants and of course you're going to want to take an x-ray a digital x-ray hopefully to verify that these copings have seated all the way onto the implant and then we're going to take our implant uh, level impression we can do this with a closed tray method or an open tray it really doesn't matter but we want to make sure that that transfer coping is completely seated uh, on the implant and then we're going to take that impression and send the copings in the impression uh, to the laboratory. And in a case like this, I'm a big fan of custom abutments, especially on, say, on this side here where we're doing a bridge. Uh, I just don't think there's any way uh, to beat custom abutments when we're going to have a bridge in terms of draw, in terms of support structure for the bridge itself. I think this is just a great use uh, for custom abutments. So the laboratory has now sent us back a couple of cust custom abutments along with our positioning bite index. So let's take a look at how we're going to use this. This is the positioning and bite index as it comes back from the laboratory. It's you know, easily marked so you can see uh, where number 18 and number 20 are. And so we're gonna use this to do two things. We're gonna use this to position 
the custom abutments in the mouth uh, and to verify and or take a new bite registration uh, in a really sturdy manner that's going to give a very accurate bite relationship to the laboratory so that we minimize our chances of having to make a lot of adjustments at the seat appointment. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and position the custom abutments into the positioning index. Little black dot there on the buckle. I'm going to go right into the positioning index and then I'm just going to hold that in place with a little flowable composite just because it's a lower and we don't want it to fall out. And just cure that for a few seconds obviously without any bonding agent or anything. And then we'll take the custom abutment for number 20 and seat it in place. And again, just use a little dab of flowable composite. And we're going to use this to make sure that we've got the orientation correct of the custom abutments in the mouth. So a nice little seating index here. So now we'll take the index, and not only should the two custom abutments fit into the soft tissue spots, but you can see when viewed from the occlusal that it also has an index on the adjacent natural tooth. So at this point, we'll drop the two screws in to the custom abutments and then begin to tighten the screws down. And I can fill the distal part of the positioning index seating as the screws tighten down as it falls into place. Again, with the custom abutments being held so that they really can't rotate. Just going back and forth and making sure that they are tight. And then I verify occlusally that we're in good solid contact with the cuspid in this case. So at this point I can take my little index off and just flick off the two little pieces of flowable composite that kept it from falling out of the splint. Verify that the screws are in fact tightened even though we already knew that they were and just visually verify that they appear to be down. And in this case, we're gonna snap another radiograph. Always gotta make sure that we get, and this is one of the great reasons to have digital radiography, is to be able to take a quick picture and just make sure that these uh, implant components are in fact seated all the way. A lot of times we're dealing with stuff where it might be three, four, five millimeters subgingival, and visually you just can't check. And you also can't assume that because the screw stopped turning, that everything is seated all the way. And so digital radiographs are a fantastic way to verify that we're seated all the way, because if we're not, we're gonna have problems with occlusion down the road, we're gonna have problems with the draw uh, of the bridge. So uh, assuming this was a patient, we would take a radiograph and in fact verify that they were down all the way. And now we're gonna put our index back in place. Now typically when you get this back from the laboratory, what we're gonna send to you is gonna have uh, the occlusal surfaces of the opposing teeth already in place here in this hard acrylic. So when you put this into place, the first thing you're going to have the patient do is bite together and verify and see if you happen to get the bite right. If everything happens to be mounted correctly when they bite together, it'll fit into the tooth indentations on the bite index. But the chances realistically of this happening are probably only about 5%. I would say 90, 95% of the time when the patient bites together into this index, they're not gonna close smoothly right into it. And that's the whole point of this appointment is to get a more accurate bite registration. So at that point, we take the index out and do what I've already done here with a watermelon burr, and that is grind away all the occlusal anatomy that was already there. What we want to do is assure that the patient is now freely biting together and closing, and you can see all the space that we have here between the opposing teeth and uh, the guide itself. In fact, there, there's no contact at all. We want them to freely be able to close. In fact, we want to mark these anterior teeth with articulating paper ahead of time to see what maximum intercuspation looks like. And then we want to make sure and verify that that is still happening now when the patient bites together. I'm going to go ahead and repeat those same steps for the other side now. And now we'll go ahead and place the guide on the other side with the custom abutments in place and then begin to tighten those screws down. And now we have the other side uh, tightened down as well. In fact, you can see as I try to rock this that there's, there's really just no movement at all. It's sitting down on top of the custom abutments 
and it's also grasping onto the adjacent natural teeth, and it just won't move at all. When you compare this to a typical bite block that we use in removable, uh, or even in Crown and Bridge, just trying to take a, an, a bite registration of an edentulous space, a mush bite as it's sometimes called. This is just a huge jump ahead, light years ahead in terms of accuracy. And you can see why we're hopefully going to need very few adjustments when we go to finally put the case in place because we've got this nice stiff platform that we're going to use for our bite registration. And again, when the patient bites together, I've already ground that so that there's no contact at all between the opposing teeth and that bite plane itself. Like I mentioned, when it comes back from the laboratory, it's got indentations from those opposing teeth, and there's a chance that it might be right on, but there's probably a better chance that it's not quite right on. And if it's not quite right on, just grind all that material away so you can see daylight between the opposing teeth and the bite registration itself. Again, make sure that these anterior teeth are contacting in their proper positions uh, with the two bite indexes in place so that the patient is coming together the right way now because in just a minute, we're going to flow our bite registration material in there. So again, it's a great use with in conjunction with the custom abutments. Now, if you were using stock abutments here, uh, you wouldn't have something like this. You could fabricate it in your office and make something like this that would attach onto the stock abutments and take the bite the same way if you're willing to go through that. And if you do, that's fine. A and you're going to save yourself a lot of time at the seat appointment uh, in adjustments if you do this type of bite registration. I just find it to be easier to do it in conjunction uh, with the custom abutments and be able to get this bite. So let's go ahead now that we've got this free and the patient can close down all the way without any interference and we've got our stable platform, let's go ahead and do our bite registration. Any polyvinyl siloxane bite registration material happens to stick uh, very well uh, to the light cured guide itself. So there's no uh, reason to put any kind of uh, bonding agent here. This is going to stick to it. Uh, in fact, it hardly, it's very difficult to get it off if you ever wanted to get it off. If you wanted to take it off in your office and do the bite for a second time, you'll see you need to get a scalpel out and really go through a little bit of work to do this. And then you guide the patient into closing. And again, you should be able to visually verify that those anterior teeth are touching in maximum intercuspation. And once the polyvinyl bite registration material has fully set, you'll be able to have the patient open and close. You can trim away any excess before you do that and be able to verify that the patient can in fact open and close. So we'll let this set for 60 seconds and then we'll verify that. So here's our bite registration. It's now in two pieces because this patient has stone teeth instead of uh, wet enamel. So it's stuck a little more, but you can see how accurate this is. It's actually kind of a nice thing that it's in two pieces because as we put these sections back and seat it back onto the custom abutments, you can see how perfectly it fits together. I mean, the, the tolerances here are fantastic. It sits right back onto those custom abutments. And this is just as solid as it gets. This is as good as a bite registration is going to get. And I'd like to be able to duplicate this for removable uh, as well as implant dentistry. And now when the patient closes back into this, they close right down into it and we're able to verify this. And so at this point, all we have to do is remove the segments and we're going to remove the custom abutments and send this all back uh, to the laboratory. In fact, we've recently started a new program here where we actually can do duplicate abutments. So when you remove the custom abutments and send it back to the laboratory now for a, uh, a small charge, I think it's $59 a unit, we will actually send you duplicate uh, abutments for these custom abutments, which will allow you to put those into place and will also send a biotemps bridge along with it in case you want to uh, do a fixed provisional solution uh, at this point. So we can send you duplicate abutments and then you'll have a biotemp bridge that you can cement on top of that. You'll have a small occlusal adjustment probably to make on that biotemps bridge, just the same way that we had to grind some of the anatomy off the bite index before we did the bite registration. But that's another way to be able to uh, provisionalize this patient with something fixed like a biotemp through the use of these duplicate abutments. So again, with the use of this positioning bite index in conjunction with some custom abutments, we're able to really solve one of the big problems that we see here in the laboratory, and that is to be able to accurately dial in the occlusion on a Kennedy class one or a Kennedy class two uh, clinical situation where we've lost uh, the uh, we've lost all the posterior teeth on either one 
or both sides. And again, if you don't use um, uh, custom abutments and you're doing this with a solid abutment or a stock abutment, an abutment replica, or what we sometimes in the lab call a single stage abutment, you can still do something like this. You'll just need to fashion a jig like this uh, in your office to be able to get a stable platform here to put some bite registration on the other side and have the patient uh, close down into. But again, I'm not saying this because I'm at the laboratory, but I just like custom abutments because I want my laboratory technicians designing abutments with the ideal amount of draw, with the uh, ideal taper, and the ideal amount of support for whatever permanent bridge, like a Bruxer bridge, is going to go in a spot like this. That's really one of the reasons why I prefer to use the custom abutments rather than using a stock abutment and prepping it myself in the mouth and then trying to accurately communicate uh, where those abutments are going to be uh, to the laboratory. So I'm a big fan of the custom abutments and now that we're able to use this positioning bite index to be able to get a very accurate bite back to the laboratory, uh, we can really minimize uh, any adjustments we might have to make at the seat appointment. And if you'd like more information on clinical tips and techniques related to implant dentistry, please visit inclusivemagazine.com. That about wraps it up for this week's edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan Strong, and all of us here at the laboratory, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time.